Dracula's Daughter is Universal's only direct sequel to the original Dracula. Any of the others, like Son of Dracula, never seem to regard any continuity. It picks up right where it left off, with Dr. Van Helsing having just staked Dracula when the police come in and accuse him of murder. Van Helsing fully admits that he killed the man because he was a vampire, as if the police are going to believe him. The rest of the film centers around Countess Maria Zaleska, who, like Dracula, is a vampire. But unlike her father, she is reluctant to her vampire heritage and wants to be free of its curse. Free to live as a woman. Free to take my place in the bright world of the living. She's played by Gloria Holden, who, like Lugosi, is very hypnotic, seductive, and creepy. In real life, it's been said she was resistant to follow the same path as Bela Lugosi. She saw him being typecast and have lots of trouble getting other roles. Nor did she want to be in a horror film at all, so it's very appropriate and in some way might have helped her on-screen persona as the reluctant vampire. Countess Zaleska has also been said to be the first lesbian vampire on film. One of the most talked about scenes is when she brings a female victim over her house, in the guise that she's paying her to pose for a painting. We're not sure exactly what she's planning to do to this girl. The victim is very uncomfortable, and this makes for a very awkward and suspenseful scene. She has male victims, too. Her main target is a psychiatrist named Garth, who's a friend of Van Helsing. For a sequel to one of the most famous horror films of all time, it's surprising that Dracula does not make an appearance, except only briefly as a corpse, which is a wax bust of Lugosi. Still, it manages to capture some of the creepy mood of the original, and you can almost feel the presence of Lugosi hovering over it. The only returning character here is Van Helsing, played again by Edward Van Sloan. His acting has significantly improved since the original. Before, his dialogue always had a deliberate pacing, but now he sounds more natural. His character is cool, collected, calm, and rational. Everything he says is always matter-of-fact, even when nobody else believes him. The character that steals the whole movie is the Countess's servant, a really weird guy named Sandor, played by Irving Pitchell. He's one of my favorite minor characters in a universal horror film. Sandor is always monotone, and everything he says is morbid. His mere existence is to be a killjoy to the Countess. She's trying to find her happiness, but he keeps bringing her down. Watch this. Twilight. Long shadows on the hillsides. Evil shadows? No. No, peaceful shadows. The flutter of wings in the treetops. The wings of bats. I love it. It gets funnier every time I watch it. Now, as soon as I see his face, I start cracking up. This is a great example of dark comedy that actually works. Unfortunately, there's plenty more examples where the comedy is in there just to be stupid. This was made a year after Bride of Frankenstein, Universal's first attempt at making any kind of sequel, and a more successful one, too. One of the biggest reasons for that was it had James Whale as the director. He was the master of crafting dark humor. He was originally considered for Dracula's daughter, but unfortunately that didn't happen. It seems like they were trying to emulate his style, but failed for the most part. The movie does have a lot of other good things going for it. It's no masterpiece, but it's worth seeing. One of the things that seems to help it is that it's completely independent of the original, making it original in its own right. I mean, Dracula isn't even in it. That's what you call taking a risk and not treading over the same formula all over again. More horror films today should take note. The film ends in Transylvania, right where the first Dracula began. It's a nice way to bookend the two films. It's also worth mentioning that Universal's first wave of horror films began with Dracula and ended with Dracula's daughter. So these Transylvania scenes also bookend the whole golden age of the genre. Dracula. 